This is CBS News Bay Area with Juliet Goodrich. Good evening. So we are heading into a three day weekend, but it's going to be a wet one. Back to back atmospheric rivers are taking aim at the Bay Area. Still dry out there right now, but that will all change by tomorrow when the first wave of rain moves on in. Crews around the Bay Area are using the break to get ready for the storms. In San Francisco, crews used a crane to cut off limbs of a large tree on Lincoln Way. And on the peninsula, PG&E crews staged equipment and material near Half Moon Bay. That is where we saw widespread power outages during the last round of storms. So let's go now to Paul Hagen, who is monitoring the storms from our virtual set. Paul. Now, Jules, that first atmospheric river is going to move in tomorrow. The storm system that sends it our way is going to be remaining well offshore. So it's going to propel that atmospheric river and the associated cold front across the Bay Area pretty quickly on Saturday. It's the second storm system that moves in. It's going to be much closer to the coast. And not only does it get closer to the coast, it gets stuck there, which means once the rain moves back in Sunday afternoon and evening, it's going to stick around into Monday and Tuesday. The longer the rain falls on saturated ground, the more we have to worry about the flooding and landslide threat. So let's take a look at rain and wind hour by hour. Looking for downtown San Francisco is kind of a representative of the entire Bay Area. And we'll get into details area wide coming up in just a few minutes. There is the rain for that first atmospheric river and the strongest winds with this one. Not going to be exceptional. The 25 to 30 mile an hour range shouldn't put any undue stress on the power grid. Now that one moves out by Saturday evening, but the next one moves in on Sunday, adding up more rain already with some slightly stronger winds around 30 miles an hour once again. But the strongest winds are going to be as that heart of the storm system makes its closest approach to the coast on Monday. That's when we're going to have widespread wind gusts in the 35 to 40 mile an hour range with some gusts in the 40 to 50 mile an hour range. That's strong enough, while not close to what we had a couple weeks ago, to still result in sporadic power outages. So be prepared for that. And this particular forecast model is adding up for downtown San Francisco over four inches of rain. It's kind of towards the top end of the range of possibilities. Really, we expect closer to two and a half to three inches of rain. But because there's some uncertainty exactly where that storm system parks, there's uncertainty with exactly how much rain we are going to get. We'll get into that range of possibilities in more detail coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Paul, thank you. A daredevil parachuting from the top floor. It's just the latest viral stunt off an abandoned high rise complex in downtown Los Angeles. The three luxury towers next to Crypto Arena are also a destination for taggers and also graffiti artists. And you can see they left their mark on nearly every single floor. So this week, officials also got a look inside the towers. Tom Waite gives us a look at what they found. New video from inside the unfinished luxury skyscraper development in downtown LA that was targeted by graffiti artists and daredevils. From the unfinished departments to the equipment and construction materials gathering dust, the place almost looks like there was a sudden evacuation, a time capsule from 2019 when the project went bust. I can tell you this, um, when you're actually in there, it, uh, all the videos don't do it justice. The massive towers sit in L.A. City Councilman Kevin DeLeon's district. He went inside for the first time with a team of officials from the LAPD Bureau of Engineering, LAFD, LA DOT, and several contractors. City officials are working quickly to secure the site to avoid more tagging and more dangerous stunts like this where people parachuted from the top floors. When you're in there, this is massive. It is absolutely massive. And we're dealing with a 45 story building and two 40 story buildings. The new video shows how taggers made their way through large sections of the buildings, spray painting walls and windows from top to bottom, places where developers clearly intended for luxury apartments to be in place by now. Instead, it's a maze of unfinished walls, wires, and ventilation ducts. Is it trashed? Is it tore up inside? Well, uh, I wouldn't say it was. It is trashed or, or torn up. Um, um, it's. Uh, it looks like a construction site. It's pretty remarkable that after five years, exposure to the elements, it doesn't look as bad as one would think. The owners of the massive complex, Oceanwide Plaza, are based in Beijing, China. Councilman De Leon says he's had some communication with attorneys connected to the defunct company, but there's been little progress in getting them to comply with orders to clean up and secure the site. Well, the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. Uh, we're waiting for Oceanwide uh, developers back in Beijing, China to step up. They have until the 17th, which is this Saturday. Uh, today's Thursday. 
um, but I'm not holding my breath. And I think the writing's on the wall, you know, no pun intended. All right, so if Ocean Wide doesn't comply by tomorrow's deadline, the city will start its own cleanup and we'll have to figure out what to do with the building next. The company had other developments in the works, which were also halted, including one in San Francisco. So we went by that site today on Mission and First, and this was where one of two towers was planned. But take a look. As you can see, the project never even made it off the ground. Construction came to a halt four years ago. And now, according to the Chronicle, there is a request from the courts to foreclose and sell off the property so the contractors can be paid out for the work that they already did. The two towers of Ocean Wide Center were slated to have office space, more than 250 residential units and a hotel. The larger building was supposed to be the city's second tallest skyscraper behind the Salesforce Tower. Governor Gavin Newsom made a trip to the East Bay today to discuss new efforts to deal with the state's homelessness crisis. In Richmond, the governor helped clean up a homeless encampment. Later, he went to Oakland to announce a new round of funding for home key projects. The state program converts vacant buildings into housing for the homeless people. And in just three and a half years, we now have procured, purchased over 15,000 new permanent hotel and motel rooms. The governor announced six new projects throughout the state, including one in Oakland. The CHP issued an ebony alert for a missing teen out of San Francisco. Mijan Dadris Oman was last seen at about 4.30 on Wednesday in the area of Forster Street and Teresita Boulevard in the Miraloma neighborhood. Now she's five foot three, weighing about 170 pounds and was wearing a black hoodie, a salmon shirt, and maroon sweatpants at the time of her disappearance. The Ebony Alert System just went online in California this year. It is a result of a new law to bring more attention to missing black youth. And welcome back. California's two major public school systems are extending the deadline to accept admission offers this year due to delays in the financial aid process. Students will have at least an extra two weeks after the typical May 1st deadline to accept offers from UCs and CSUs. This is stemming from problems with the FAFSA application for financial aid. The federal government unveiled a new version last year, but it wasn't available until two months later into the college application cycle. As universities of, of higher education, we all just need the data from the FAFSA to even offer anything to tell students, hey, this is how much we can get to help you pay for school. But right now we're kind of up in the air because we can't give that to students yet. Typically, Usually students get financial aid award letters in March, but now it's unclear when those will come in and give important context for college decisions. Las Vegas Raiders quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo is facing a two-game suspension next season for violating the NFL's performance-enhancing drug policy. According to ESPN, the violation relates to the use of prescribed meds without having a valid exemption. Meantime, the Raiders are expected to release Garoppolo in mid-March. So the Silicon Valley Auto Show is happening now at the Santa Clara Convention Center, San Jose State uh, University's Spartan Racing Team. And they're actually displaying vehicles designed and built entirely by students. They're competing in the Society of Automotive Engineers Collegiate Design Series, learning the skills to join the industry. The whole point of this competition is, is trying to foster the next generation of automotive engineers in such a way where you put them in a simulated industry environment and the best way to simulate an industry environment is to build a race car. San Jose State's Spartan racing team will be going up against 70 to 80 other schools. Silicon Valley Auto Show runs today through Sunday at the Santa Clara Convention Center. Admission is $14 for adults, $11 for seniors, and $11 for kids ages 8 to 12. And Sunday is Family Day, where kids 12 and under get in for free without a paying adult. It was a long and winding road, but some dedicated sleuths have helped Paul McCartney's iconic lost guitar finally get back to where it once belonged. Clever. It is the distinctive 
bass guitar that helped launch Beatlemania in the early 1960s. So it was stolen in 1972 and then lost for decades. But last year, a group of lifelong Beatles fans joined up to help track it down. The project got publicity. Someone actually came forward with the instrument. It is now returned to McCartney. I want to know who took it. I guess we don't know that. But it's returned. Thanks for watching. Have a safe weekend. The news continues at 8 on PIX Plus or 44 Cable 12. See you right back here at 11.